So we are literally in this moment, in this second, in this right now, finishing up the last bit of your four day retreat. How you feel? I feel peaceful. Word. Well, in this moment, I want you to um, select your shade. Like gold, it said, now you know you brown. Okay. Um, let me make sure I got the tool we need inside of this. Because in this process, we're gonna um, take a time to just share your story. Um, share your story of how you got here. Um, how did you even come to know this space? How did you even come to know me? And then share your story of how you got here. Why did you even return to this space? Why did you even return back to me? And then share the story of how you feel here. Uh, I don't got no pen in here. Well, maybe right now we're not gonna do this like you sit your heart. Maybe that's your, your own personal assignment. You can have that though. What you have in your hand. The pen's aren't in the bowl in the other bowl that we were just using. It's the pen. Is it? Then I put, but I put it all the way up. That means I gotta get it all the way back out. I can do it. I don't think you know where it is though. I've been like cleaning up behind myself today. Oh, yeah. And I haven't been giving instructions today. But I can walk upstairs like I'm doing in this morning. <laughs> <laughs> So, Shorty, what's your name? Introduce, uh, share yourself or introduce yourself. Um, my name is Doshio Kaur Sebi. Word. And I know that you have an interest, and I learned a lot about you this weekend, but I know your story of, um, well, not quite how you found out about the Madison House. That's still your mystery. <laughs> but your story of arriving to the Madison House is still powerful. Um, is this too big of a needle? No. Word. Do you have to thread a needle? I think the footage is the same and uh -huh. so how did you come um to discover this space? Um I was I came from um a lot of direct action organizing, like being on the streets and fighting for justice and doing protests and all that and started questioning what justice even is or like what are we trying to do here and like how what's a better way that we can go about this that's not giving up our power and so i decided to go to grad school in at eastern mennonite university in virginia and but i was carrying a lot of pain and a lot of grief just mine collective other people just coming straight from doing the organizing yes right? And I'm studying conflict transformation, peace building, you know, studying these concepts, but, you know, what feeling it in real time um, in my heart and in my body. And then um, a few months after I joined the school, um, a close comrade of mine took his life. And so at that point, I just didn't even I didn't know what was what. I didn't know what, everything I thought was real wasn't real anymore. Nothing mattered. And I was just, you know, struggling to get by each day. And somehow I stumbled upon um, this series of healing circles for people of color here at the Madison House. And so um, I was able how many, how long ago this was for you? This was in 2016. Okay. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I didn't, at that point, I had nothing else to lose. And so I drove my ass up here, two and a half hours here, two and a half hours back on the weekends for, I don't remember how long the series was, maybe two months or something. And uh, I came up here and, and I also enjoy DC too. So I'll use that as an opportunity to visit Sankofa Bookstore, pick up some homemade tedge, 
um, some Ethiopian food, all, all my favorite things. And, uh, but yeah, I just came here. I knew I was a guest in a space that I wasn't familiar with, but I was welcomed in like I belong. Mm. And um, I just, I came raw. I came with vulnerable, I guess, with whatever I had on, you know, on me, in me. Um, not knowing what I was showing up for, but uh, Queenland did a, an incredible job of. Shout out to creating. Queenland out there. Peace to the Queen. Peace. <laughs> she created enough structure that I felt comfortable just going with the flow of everything. And, and I, she was vulnerable. You know, she brought her story and her why and everything to the forefront, too. So I felt like even though I didn't have much wherewithal myself, that we were all together, you know, and not, there was no like hierarchy or anything, um, but we were all equally deserving of feeling whole. I see. And so that um, experience has stuck with me over the years and um, I've, you know, stayed in touch with the Madison House primarily through social media, but I have had friends move to DC over the years or people visiting, I've always told them about this place. I don't know if any of them ever came or not, but um, it was just beautiful because being a part of like, you know, movement communities and stuff, like the stuff that we talked about here, just the integration of healing and movement and liberation and just what it all means. Those are things that like I'm used to talking about, but here it just, it just was like the fluidity between healing and movement spaces and restoration and liberation and all that. Um, so I've always kind of kept it in my mind as like, okay, this, it can exist. It does exist. Mm -hmm. It's real. I see. Um, it's not just in my head as a dream, uh, but it's actually happening and people are actually doing it. And it's a, I've been there. Um, it's not just a place on the internet, I see. right? Um, so yeah, that's how I, that's the original story. And then here we are six years later and, uh, I'm on a sabbatical from working cause I basically just hit a wall. It was like, you can't keep doing, I have a website, I have a whole couple LLCs and I've just never launched officially because I just couldn't bear the concept of taking on more people, more clients. I'm like, I don't want nobody's problem. Don't mm. come to me with your problems. Because I'm up to here. I got no space. No space. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm on this break. And, and I was actually wanting to go to this retreat in St. Lucia, um, led by another... Um, person who does healing work who I follow on Instagram. I don't know him personally. Uh, but I saw there was gonna be a big tropical storm coming through. And so something in me was just like, no, it's not now's not the right time to be going to the islands. And so I didn't, but I just knew I was I want I wanted that or needed that concept of a retreat. I see. And then um I already knew that I was gonna visit some friends here in, in DC and Virginia. Um, but the, the dates and the times, they were all kind of up in the air. And I've really just had to surrender to time, like to time, right? Like I thought I would been, have been left the country four months ago and I'm still here. But then you posted something on your Instagram that you were doing retreats. And I was like, this is perfect. And it all just worked out. like all the plans fit together you know i'm trying to coordinate with two different friends here in dc and virginia to do five different things with them plus do a retreat and then i remember in one day it all worked itself out i said you know it. and and everything was like okay on these days you're gonna do this and then this and then this and and it was so perfect because as i've told you you know like the the friend that I was with before here and the friend after, like the all three have been men in my life who who are willing and offering to hold space for me or to um let's use a different term than hold space, but to uh, be in their full, you know, divine masculine and take care 
take care. I think you're almost like a grounding force in that masculine, so that the container, the, the spirit, the, the wind of the air, or the water, you know, can rest in the balance or the structure or the grounding, I say, I say, I say, you know, of that masculine energy. Yeah. About having to be responsible for being what it is naturally. Yeah. Yeah. So. Now I'm usually the one, like, because I travel alone, so I'm the one booking everything, managing everything, like, on top of everything at all moments, because I got to know what's going on in every second, where I'm going, why I'm going. And on this trip, I haven't had to do any of that. Like, I literally can just be present. And it's like, I'm over here singing songs, dancing, stuff that, like, I don't even give myself the time <laughs> and space to do because I'm so bogged in my mind with getting stuff done or making sure everything's okay and taking care of uh -huh. others uh -huh. you know so you were able to experience what it's like to be taken care of yes yes uh -huh. taking care of cared for um and honored I should. honored is like you're that uh, to know i'm valuable enough worthy of somebody taking care so it's not just like Oh, I'm taking care because you asked me to because you do things for me sometimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's like, no, like, I value you. So check you this out, them. though. I, a question, permission to ask a question? Please. Because you're speaking about taking care, not because you're taking care of me because of that space, but even here. So this is a retreat, and a retreat where you had to, uh, to pay money in order for me to take care of you, in a sense. Mm -hmm. But did it feel as though you actually paid money to be taken care of? Um, it did because I'm a Capricorn, so I know my money. <laughs> but it didn't feel transactional. I should. It didn't feel transactional. Where it's like, you know, if I were to stay at a hotel, it's like there's a candy bar in the fridge and that's five extra dollars. Uh -huh. You know, and like every single thing is like monetary. Oh, of course. Yeah. And it's like, this was like, okay, I just paid you one time and then we're just present with each other. You know, so it wasn't like, like it was what I need. You know, you're in tune with me to meet me where I'm at. I didn't have to preconceive. What was that process like? So you know you have a need, you know you need to retreat. You're about to run to St. Lucia, you know, then a storm comes and all this stuff is taking place. Um, and then you I make a post and it's about a retreat. But even in that process, it wasn't like we did a lot of talking and preparation. Mm -hmm. So what was that action like of meeting a retreat, finding it? I guess in that moment, was, was was that where the surrender was birthed? Oh, yeah. Like, the fact that it all happened in one day. I mean, the surrender has been there, right? Because I'm a planner. Like, if I want to do something, <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it done, period. But I've had a blockage. And it was like, you have to surrender, you have to surrender, you have to surrender. So I've been practicing surrender for a couple of months now. Um... So I guess I was ready to uh, surrender, you know, when this moment came. And even one of my friends, uh, she was like, when I was telling her about this before coming, she was said, wow, that's a lot. Um, that takes courage or surrender or something to allow someone to be do a one on one retreat with you, like to really let somebody into your space like that and guide you. And then you don't even know. <laughs> Cause I couldn't tell her what that meant. She's like, I, I don't know what we're gonna do. And she's like, wow, that's a lot, you know? And I'm like, I guess I've been practicing surrender. Trust all you know? that stuff. And it's like, at this point I was prepared to be in surrender. I'm comfortable, I'm getting more comfortable oh, with shit. the feeling of the unknown and the, to where it's like, okay, here we are. And I'm, I'm here for the ride. Wow. Wow, so um, takeaways is there any takeaways is there any ahas or is there okay let me say it this way uh give me five um takeaways um from this from your journey from this experience from your journey of surrender with me um five takeaways one takeaway is that it's possible <laughs> this is so cool i was just on a podcast last week and they been posting little like quotes from my, what I said and one from yesterday was like anything that we can imagine is possible uh, so you got to live in your own you have to you have got to live in your living word yeah 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 so it's like things that I've vision of imagined I've dreamed of I've longed for that the 
you know, a part of a voice inside of me or a voice outside other people's voices are like, yeah, that's not, that's pie in the sky, you know, like that's not real. It's real. <laughs> it's all real. It's all possible. You know, things I can imagine for myself. So that's one takeaway is that if I can imagine it, it's possible. The second is like, it's almost part two of that one, which is like, not it, like that's like big picture. If I can imagine it's possible theory. Yes, yes, yes. But then it's like, no, like on a really specific level. Like I said, in my mind, I didn't even say it out loud. I just said in my mind, like I want to, I want to, I need a drum circle. I need, I want to dance at a drum circle. And then I just was missing the experience of be dancing at the drum circle at Malcolm X Park. Uh -huh. Then you said, Hey, uh, you want to go to a drum So party? have you ever experienced retreating uh, with a telepathic teacher? No. I've never experienced a one-on-one -on -one retreat, ever. Uh, like, I've been on retreats where it's like, you know, it's your job, you know, it's <laughs> workshops and trainings about strategic planning. Uh, like uh, but so never... there was also a freedom or ease or exhale, or exhalation. Yeah. That came with being in a space where if you think it, it can happen. Yes. Yes. And um, I don't have to be the one to make it happen. Because I've retreated. I've created my own retreats. So I've had just me retreats that, you know, have been my healing, healing retreats. But once again, it's like it's a balance because between me holding the thing for myself and then me being in the thing. Uh. Um, so I know that feeling but not the, but the lack the responsibility is still on me so it's still like a weight whereas this time it was light i could just think it i could see it i could speak you know i'm learning how to say what i need that's the third takeaway is like you ain't gotta say everything <laughs> just say what you need just say what you need and then ask for what you need i say you know I like say. i'll be asking the you know, for the question before the need, you know, but it's like I'm testing the waters. Like, hey, do you have uh, that mm -hmm. way? If you do have, if you don't have it, I'm not even gonna say nothing. But if you do have it, then I can say I need that. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's like the thing is, the re the the realization is like I need what I need, regardless what other people have or don't have, and that's none of my business. <laughs> Because, like, okay, they don't have it. I still need it, though. So I've got to, you know, I still need it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that shit fact doesn't change because someone don't have it. Right? So that's been a big aha. It's like the most important thing is knowing what I need and being clear about that at all times. I don't have to think about what they're going to think when they, they hear what I need or if they have it or anything other than. The how is not your responsibility. Yeah. Just focusing on being very clear with what I need and what I want. Mm -hmm. Very clear. Yeah, very. <laughs> um, the fourth takeaway has just been, it's more of a feeling, like a, know, a knowing on the feeling level of just what it feels like to treat myself as sacred or to be treated as sacred. Like um, that concept of sacred is something that I speak to a lot or it's, something that comes up for me a lot and I converse with people around me and it's something different for everybody but you know I've felt a lot of angst around it because I don't feel like I'm being treated sacred or that my stuff is being treated mm -hmm. sacred or my space being treated sacred and but I haven't been able to articulate what I need what it needs you know, but now I have a better sense of like okay like this so is instead of the angst you have like. to feel yeah. Of what it is. You know, you don't have to, wow. Okay. Yeah. Are you feeling the energy? Yeah. Feeling the anxiety? Yeah. Yeah. Are you feeling the energy? Are you feeling the anxiety? That's something that came up on this retreat, you know. Um, Ashe. I forgot all about that lesson. It feels like days ago. Like, I don't even know you all how long we've been here or anything, uh, but we've been here. And even today, you know, you see me dressed like this. Well, why are you looking all righteous and shit? But no, like, we had to do some work for the Ori, for the head. Which was something that was always something that also crossed her path for several years throughout her own life. This whole Ori energy, and today we we honored and honored prayer and honored space. Um, so the fourth is to feel. 
the invisible aspect that's the filler, the secret ingredient for you is the filler. Mm. The fourth power for you is the filler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that, like, that doesn't... I have a renewed sense of lightness when it comes to feeling versus the heaviness I used to feel. Mm. So you have eradicated feeling from the scapegoat. So before, when people spoke feeling to you, it meant to carry, it meant to be heavy. Yeah. And now you actually realize in the liberation of the feeling that it's fluid, it's a flow. Yeah, and and how, you know, you've been, you gave me the language around my tears watering my garden, you know, and like really just allowing them. So even tears doesn't have to be painful mm. but it's actually nourishing yeah, I get that. that even tears don't have to be painful but it can be nourishing I say I say yo is that the fifth takeaway yeah, <laughs> That's the fifth takeaway, yeah. word word that's beautiful well I see also on your hand and even the folks witness that in the preparation of this video we got this pink box out we got something in your hand, we're sewing, we had to run upstairs to grab needles. What is it that you're doing right now? I'm finishing the last part of mending my heart. And so, found um, some fabric. This is my inner child, this fabric. This is my el inner elder. I show you, I show you. Yeah. And we we put her together you know we flipped her inside out and let her know that actually she got to re be basically be rebirthed um so it's a physical manifestation of my whole journey here which has been a death and a rebirth um but she didn't have to die though she just got to be reborn 2.0 Ashay, version 2.0. Version 2.0. And so she got to be reborn. And, you know, in the process of birth, sometimes there's some tears. And it's not always completely easy. So we're here mending her and filling her up. We just got done filling her up now, cutting the last touches. And I measured the string off. Now I'm stuck. Is that what you are as you made your heart together, as you spoke all the words you spoke? Did you do something wrong and are you stuck? Is that your true reality? Well, you're saying it like it's not. Because you have to remember that in the house of God, in the house of love, there's unlimited mistakes, unlimited scrap sheets of paper. Mm -hmm. So there are no mistakes. You know? It's a chance to pause. Like I had to pause and go back upstairs to even give you the tool of the needle. But it's a mistake that I did not bring you down here in the first place. So no mistakes, you know. Um, I want to say thank you, though. <laughs> I want to say thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for trusting me to allow me to guide you on this journey, uh, to nurture you. You know, for feeling safe enough to allow me to nurture you, to hold you, to be vulnerable with you, you know, and to also cook and fill you and love you, you know, and show to you how I see you. And as a result of that, you're able to see a reflection of self just by simply looking in the eye of the mirror. Mm. Not looking at the mirror. Not looking around the mirror. Not looking by, through, and past the mirror. But by looking into the eye of the mirror. <sighs> Resting in the eye of the storm. Shout out to Energy Oya this weekend. Shout out to Energy Akali. Did I say it right? Mm -hmm. uh, this weekend. Um, the fact that there was a storm in St. Lucia, the energy of air and the wind, but you needed to find a place to rest inside of the eye, but not to be in the storm. Mm. And you found yourself here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we kind of in the storm. We're in D.C. Ah, ah, right. But you're in the eye of the fucking storm. Yeah. At peace, right? Yep. You're at, at peace. At the Madison house. I should. Word. Well, thank you. Thank you again. And you officially free. Congratulations. You graduated, kid. 
you know, you, you, you held yourself to your own needed necessary death. So you faced your own needed necessary death and you held yourself to the process to only rebirth yourself and to love yourself in that process. You're something else.